Hi, Roger here with uh, Roland Scherer from, from AXA. Welcome. Welcome. So we see that you're the head of AXA Revenue, yeah. or REV. It's, what is that? So uh, REV is actually uh, the department at AXA that is responsible for data and emerging technologies. So REV, well, is the English word for speeding up and the French word, almost the French word for the dream. So it fits quite well and it's a Norwegian word for the clever fox. So we selected a word that is not covered with any agency, data lab, something like that, because we had that one before and we go in another direction. Yeah. That's great that you use a lot of like kind of semantic analysis yes, yes, to yes. pick a word with multi-dimensional yes, meaning. Yes, yes. So multi-dimensional brings up data, yeah. which is often multi-dimensional. Insurance is one of the places where, in a way, data started yes. because actuarial tables and, and math being applied to a business. Yeah. What makes a data-driven company now? Yes, the, so tricky when you look at insurance, it consists more or less of people relationships, data, money and mathematical models. So being nowadays a data-driven company is very, very important in the insurance industry in general and also for our company. The tricky part is we're coming from a legacy. It's not that easy to convince people to be really data-driven, to really understand data as an asset. And you have to cope with that kind of multi-dimensional problem because you have to have people to understand when they enter data right. You have to have the proper architectures. You have the proper governance, data privacy, data security. And coping that one with all these different dimensions, this is the trick of being really a data-driven company. Yeah, so do you, have, do you have any tricks for trying to get people on board? So what you start is with a collaborative experience. If you do data just in the basement with the databases, it's simply not enough. Because honestly, data happens everywhere. Uh, if you're a claim center, if you're in the call center, if you're out there in a sales agency, everybody is actually treating data and you have to understand the holistic concept around data. You have to convince this, the top level sponsors up to the, even the, the, the guy at the entry door that is important to treat data well and to get there. So what we do is, of course, driving first of all the cultural change around data and then gradually coming into data architectures, data tools and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you see that there's a fundamental problem with people understanding it. I think people don't understand probability very well. Yep. And I'm just wondering what you think in terms of getting data. Look at it that way. Um, in the insurance industry, you're used to probabilities. You're also used to rare events. This is more or less the insurance risk. It is a rare event by itself. So on the one side, we have actuaries that are very much uh, understand what probabilities are, to manage risk, many things, right? But when you go to the business side and driving strategic decisions, of course, there's an overestimation and underestimation of events and going forward in that direction. Of course, this is a, is a trick part in our industry. Right. You know, one of the things too with data, and I think you said it well in that it's in the basement, it's hard to do. How do you bring in the human element to the... the <clears throat> So, um, on the one side, when it comes to the data assembly line, uh, you bring the human element in by actually uh, giving everybody the understanding why this data is important. It's more or less codified knowledge, what we have around our businesses, around our clients, and our things, and the ecosystems we are driving. But on the other side, the human element is especially when it comes to how we use the data, uh, when it comes to having strong ethical boundaries, having strong understanding on fairness, fairness biases, and so on and so forth. And this is a tricky part, because what means fair in an insurance space? Um, everybody understands treating um, a religion or uh, um, skin color right. This is, treatment is clearly identified as unfair. But if you have something like gender or age in a health insurance, is it now fair or unfair that people that join the insurance company later paying more because they actually there's a higher risk of a disease? Or is it already unfair? So it's a very, very complex com concept and we are taking that one very seriously and also foster this public debate on what is the human element of data. Mm -hmm. Good, so in terms of like what AXA does, we're here at a conference that's yeah. covering architecture yeah. and, and so forth. How does that relate to how you deliver what you're trying to do? So first of all, we heavily believe in open source and open standards. So one big reason why we're here as an insurance company at a tech conference is that we want to share our knowledge and our understanding and our, our ideas with the public, bring that one to the, uh, to the people that are actually doing software in other companies and other industries, usually we work with. Um, starting with the TOGAF group on, on, on open standards, publishing that one, uh, contributing to open source projects, 
uh, funding open source projects, going out there and sharing this knowledge because we believe it's a collaborative experience. It doesn't make sense that we hide that kind of information because it has to go out there and has to go also in the companies we work with regularly because we believe in these values. Yeah, I also think there's a common phrase that all companies are technology companies now. Yeah. And you're kind of describing that kind of um, scenario. How do you kind of relate to the kind of technology industry at large? You mentioned open source. Do you, I mean, do you try to work with folks like that are, are more in the software realm? Yes. And so um, what we do, um, if software companies follow the same values, fostering open standards, fostering uh, ethical understanding, we are happy to work with and we do that. We're working together very hand in hand with Amazon, Microsoft, Google to drive things forward, drive things forward in an open and transparent manner. It's, it's part of the game now. Nevertheless, we are a company that, of course, are business related. So every discussion around IP, intellectual property, and how things are treated is for us a little bit artificial because we are interested in, let's do it open, let's drive adoption on certain standards instead of actually having IP discussion on that one because we want to see an adoption industry. Looking at health insurance, just as an example, um, Health insurance in, in general, it's, a, it's broadening its scope. In the past it was like, yes, there was health insurance. Nowadays, it's a healthcare ecosystem. So what you want to foster is open standard and open exchange of information between the players and the healthcare industry to allow better services for the clients, to allow more uh, digitalization uh, around, more efficiency around the product for the sake of the client. And of course, there's a win-win behind that one because we're getting more efficiency on the way we operate. Uh, and the client gets more, a better outcome around uh, by using data and digitalization in the proper way. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have to influence other ones to, uh, to, to, to see it in the same manner and uh, um, going forward. This is what we hear on the conference. Yeah, I think that healthcare too is one of the most murky of areas because it's so private. It's, it's a very tricky one, especially when you talk publicly about healthcare and healthcare data. Uh, it's a, for a lot of people a very uncomfortable topic to talk about. But honestly, looking at the healthcare industry in the US, in Europe, it's largely paper-based. It's, it's still people throwing paper balls at each other. This is how it is between hospitals, insurances, doctors, GPs, farmers. And one thing we heavily believe in, there is a better way to do that one with ha having the client empowered. The active consent, easy example, active consent management. Having the data lineage from end to end, really from collecting the data up to uh, 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 using the data and having the client empowered to allow them actively to switch on and switch off things where they say, I don't want to have my data used for that purpose. These things are not fixed in technology, not at all. And uh, we believe that this is an area where we have to have more uh, innovation uh, to drive things forward. Right, well, this has been a great conversation. I, I'm glad the way you brought it back to that people yeah. are really what matters and they're just using technology to get things done. So I appreciate your time. Thank you.